guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about the RHIA versus the CCS, One Viewer's Dilemma. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, this video was inspired by a viewer comment, so I'm going to read the comment and then we're going to begin. Here we go. All right, so the viewer says, Hi Blue, I plan on getting my bachelor's in health information management. I am currently a new graduate nurse. Um, the bachelor's program that I will start offers RHIA testing at the end. Um, should I want to get a job as a medical coder, should I take this or should I go with the CCS instead? Also, do could you get the same pay as someone with a CCS certification if you don't plan on doing management? Uh, what might be some pros and cons of both certifications? I currently have no coding knowledge. All right. My channel is Medical Coding with Blue, <laughs> and I talk a lot about the different certifications. So if your question is kind of like this, this video is for you, but I also really strongly encourage you guys to look through the videos. You can literally type in RHIA, RHIT, CCS, CCSP, CC, CCA, CPC, CIC. <laughs> you can type in any of those and my videos will come up or you can search through my videos where I talk about the differences in medical coding credentials. So that's the first thing that you have to know. Now, this is going the expensive way around, all right? You do not need a degree to be a medical coder, all right? That's first and foremost right out of the gate. The only reason that you should get a degree, the Registered Health Information Administrator or the Registered Health Information Technician, that the Registered Health Information Technician is the Associate's Degree. The uh, Registered Health Information Administrator is the Bachelor's Degree. Now, if you are wanting to get these, this means that you want to be in a leadership position. The RHITs tend to be the auditors, they are the, the provider educators, they are coding educators, and, and they run departments as well as RHIAs. RHIAs are the top tier management side of the house. They are the ones that are running um, whole departments. And so multiple departments, they are on the business side of the house. They are on the managerial side of the house. And some people are told, well, you need a degree to be a medical coder. That is simply untrue. In this industry, in health information industry, um, the credentials actually hold a lot of weight, all right? And I will say that when it comes to these credentials. I will also say this, that RHIA program will not prepare you as much as you think for the CCS. The CCS is the gold standard of medical coding credentials. And the reason that I say it's the gold standard is because you look at any of the job listings, they are asking for the CCS a lot of the time more than any other credential because this says the certified coding specialist says that you have mastered both inpatient coding and outpatient coding in the rhia program or the health information management program of the bachelor's uh programs uh they don't go into the coding side as much their concentration of their program is going to be the managerial side of the house when employers see you with that RHIT or the RHIA designation, they are saying this person is going to be in leadership. This person wants to be in leadership. All right. So that's what they see when they see you like that. If that is not what you want to do, then by all means, just go with the certification. Because a lot of times people are thinking, I have to have this so I can make more money. I will say this. If you are getting into medical coding strictly for the money, you're in the wrong. Because yes, while we like to be paid for what we do, the commitment level to medical coding and health information management is so high that it's just not worth it for people who have lukewarm feelings, who only want to do it to chase the money. Now, yes, is it a very lucrative career field? Absolutely. And of course you should do whatever it is that you want to do. But I'm telling you, as somebody who's been in the field, for well over 14 years now. Um, I am somebody who sees on a daily basis what happens when you devote your life to this and you really enjoy it versus people who get into this strictly for the money. And you see them a lot of times they are not happy because it is very difficult. Medical coding and to learn it, we have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. That's how serious this field is. I can't state this enough. I've said this since the beginning of my channel. 
that we have to know this stuff that doctors are writing. We have to be able to understand what they're saying. So when I get um, comments that don't make any sense, that are misspelled all over the place, this is just not setting the person up for success when you're thinking to get into this field because maybe you were told that it's very easy and that all you do is push through codes and that is simply not true. Because of what we do, we are responsible for a, a whole facility's ability to have really high accuracy. And in order for things to be accurate, that's how the money comes in. If the coding is not accurate and things are just being pushed through and, oh, yeah, it's, it's okay to be put out in the wash and that kind of thing, then that's when facilities start to lose money and whole facilities have been shut down. And I know sometimes in part to the coding that was done. So that's why it's very serious when you're getting into this that you don't immediately go into the, the degree programs thinking that you need a degree to be a medical coder. If you just want to be a medical coder, then by all means, you can go for the CCA, the Certified Coding Associate, the CCSP, the Certified Coding Specialist Physician Base, the CCS, the Gold Standard of Medical Coding Credentials, <laughs> or you can go with AAPC, the CPC, the Certified Professional Coder, any one of these and employers will gladly um, hire you because you have a credential. Now, as far as like racking up a bunch of other credentials and things like that, that only should come in time when you've had experience. Please don't be taken advantage of and get all these unnecessary credentials that really are saying the same thing that your credential is already saying, I'm just saying. When I see people say, oh yeah, um, you should get the CCS and the CPC so you have more chances. Really? The CCS says that you've mastered inpatient and outpatient coding. The CPC only says that you can do outpatient coding. Why are we doubling up on credentials when the CCS says what the CPC already says? Okay, and more, all right? So that's just my advice there. But again, um, when you're going into all these degree programs and things, it's not going to get you more money because I have seen people who are degree holders make less than me and at the time I had only the CCA so I technically made more than an RHIA and I've made more than an RHIT with that CCA and this wasn't by a little bit this was by a lot so there's a thing with experience experience is going to get you more money yes um, and your knowledge base is also going to get you more money not the fact that you have a degree and you don't really know what to do with it when those managers see you with that RHIA, RHIT, they're going to know that you want to be in leadership, whether you want to be in that or not. So this is why I say that if you're wanting to get into this, forego the degree programs until you actually know. Start off with a certification and just one certification because that's going to tell you if you're going to want to continue with this investment. It's a lot of money. <laughs> it is a lot of money to get into the degree programs. And if you just start off with a certification because you wanna try it out and see if you can get in and, and get your job and things like that, it is possible to get jobs, by the way, without a degree. If you're thinking that it'll be much easier if you have a degree, it's not. I've seen people with degrees not be able to get in because they don't know how to market themselves or they have a terrible resume or they're not applying enough or they are simply just looking for entry level uh, postings and you can't just look for entry-level postings when you are looking for a job you have to apply at places that are asking for three to five years of experience uh, because everybody who's a medical coder who's already had experience is going to be working and so these employers are going to have to get who they get when they're applying so if you make yourself look really good on your resume meaning that you followed my steps in the videos that I have for resume tips for brand new medical coders. Um, and you keep your resume down to two pages max. <laughs> Don't go sending out four or five page resumes. And when you have your name on your resume, you need to put a comma and then your credential. Because if you don't, uh, if I've seen many come to me because I'm a resume writer and I've seen many that are posted on LinkedIn without their credentials on their name. You have to have your credentials on your name, folks, because they're not gonna know what you are or what you've been trained in. Now, again, I have many videos that explain the breakdown of what each credential is and 
which one is which and <laughs> what covers what. Uh, so please take the time to go through my videos. I cannot stress that enough, guys. Please go through the videos um, so that way you can see. Uh, but back to what I said about um, in the RHIA program, this the medical coding portion is a very small portion of that program. You look at any, any RHIA program or health information management program, and you will see that it's maybe almost an afterthought. Uh, when it comes to everything that they are really trying to drive home. There's a lot of things that are covered in the degree programs, but again, that portion of the medical coding is very small. And a lot of times when people are going out there with just an RHIA or just an RHIT, sometimes, now don't come for me in these comments, I'm explaining what I have seen. Sometimes, Employers will ask degree holders to get a medical coding certification, the CCS, CCA, CCSP, or the CPC, in conjunction with their degree designation because they want to ensure that that person knows how to code. Having a degree does not guarantee that you know how to code. Again, the concentration of those degree programs is going to be the managerial side. It's going to be the legal side. It's going to be the data quality and management side of the house, the human resources side of the house. That's what that's going to be concentrated on. Health information is not like any other fields where, like in, in other fields where you need to have those degrees in order to be able to get in. Not in this field. You can still have a wonderful, very lucrative career with just one certification. I've seen many people do it and they make very good money. Now, we don't talk about money in specifics on my channel, never have, and I never will. And I know that's upsetting for some of you. Why? I have no idea. Because every place in the US is gonna be starting their people off at a different rate. I do not want to be a part of the chorus of people who are out there giving out really ridiculously high starting salaries or really ridiculously low salaries so I don't want to be a part of that. My channel is about the individual. It is about the coder. Now, I do expect for you all to do your part as far as the research goes, as far as like where to apply and, you know, what, what they start off as a, what they start medical coders off in your area. Because again, it's going to be different everywhere. Florida pays differently from Michigan and California pays differently from Texas. So that's something that you have to know right out of the gate. All right. Um, and I've said before that a lot of people will get discouraged, you know, right out of school and, you know, they can't find a job is because a lot of times you all are, you all are not listing your skills. And when you're listing your skills, you're qualifying it with uh, something that doesn't need to be on there. Resumes are all about getting right to the meat of the potato. What is the point? These managers are getting hundreds, if not thousands of resumes to go through. And so when they see like qualifying words on there that's wasting their time, they're gonna toss that one off to the side. If I see knowledgeable ICD-10, it's gonna be uh, immediately dismissed. Why? Because that person didn't tell me if it's ICD-10-CM or ICD-10-PCS. And you say on your skills that you have ICD-10 skills, right? So if you said ICD-10 CM, you don't have to tell me that you're knowledgeable in it. I'm going to expect that given that that's on your skills list. Same thing with CPT-4. Um, same thing with Higgs Picks Level 2. Same thing with ICD-10 PCS if that is your skill. You have to be very specific. If you're coming from an industry that is not health related, medical related, uh, there's plenty of, of transferable skills. If you had to protect private information, if you had to use Excel spreadsheets, if you had to use Word, if you had to uh, be around different personalities, <laughs> those are all transferable skills that you can be put onto your resume. And you only have to go back 10 to 15 years on your resume in order to um, you know, get your resume all together. Because uh, for some folks who have careers that go back into um, the, the 90s, you know, you don't have to put that on there. You just have to put the last 10 to 15 years because that's as far back as an employer is going to run. So that's going to keep your resume down to two pages at least. Uh, if you can get it onto one page, that's even better. All right. Uh, but that's my advice anyway. So if you do end up pursuing the RHIA and you say, well, I, I do want a chance at management, 
um, then I recommend going ahead and pursuing the CCS after that because um, as a manager in an RHIA position, you are going to be the last line of defense because the RHIA is the, <laughs> they are the captain of the ship, right? And they are going to be the one that is going to do the, the tie breaking. They're, they're typically they are the ones that do the tie break on uh, if there's an argument uh, in, a, in an audit between the auditor and the coder. Oftentimes that RHIA is the last line of defense. <laughs> I know because that's what ours used to do for us. And so that's the thing that they do. And they are the one who make all the decisions. They're the final say because they are supposed to be very knowledgeable and they're supposed to be okay well they can look at it and be neutral because whether they side with the supervisor or whether they side with or, or the auditor or whether they side with the coder it's all for the better of the facility that everything goes through correctly and that's part of their responsibility okay so that's just my ex my <laughs> thoughts on this anyway um but if you just if you're in the program and you say well I don't really want to be a manager. I just want to be a coder and you decide maybe I'll just pursue the degree some other time or I'll just, you know, transfer my credits, whatever I can onto something else that might be helpful and useful for me in the future, like in business or something. That's totally fine. You know, you can totally do that um, and just pursue the certification. Now, a lot of people will bypass the CCA because there's a lot of ignorant talk about the CCA, um, but the CCA people, the Certified Coding Associate folks, have to know a lot. And they have the most domains, so they cover the most on their exam. This is a very powerful credential. I will always stand up for the CCA because I had the CCA for many years. I trained doctors, I trained nurses, I trained other medical coders, and I trained leadership staff as well. So it's a very good credential if you get it. Um, the CCSP uh, is just outpatient. It's all outpatient coding. It is a very good credential as well. And you can, you can work anywhere. You can even work in hospitals with the CCSP. The CCS is a four hour monster beast exam. This is a very difficult exam and a lot of people are kind of cavalier about it. Like, oh yeah, I can just study for it and I can just pass it. Keep in mind that the CCS says that you have mastered inpatient and outpatient coding. There is no room for ambiguity of, oh, no, I'm not really strong in, in CPT. I'm not really strong in PCS. You have to be good with both. When I took the um, CCS last year, I took it in November of last year, coming up on one year. <laughs> uh, but uh, when I took it in November of last year, I... Um, I had had, of course, 13 years, 13 plus years of experience in the outpatient setting. What I did not have was hands-on inpatient coding experience. So I had to make sure that I studied really hard and I studied really hard for six months uh, to, to really um, be ready and prepared for the CCS. Again, as a four hour exam, I had eight minutes left on the clock. That's how much the time is just really close because you have roughly two minutes per question and there is no time to think about anything else other than getting through that exam. So if you are going to study for this CCS exam, you can totally study on your own if you want to. There's many programs out there. I recommend that you do your research. I've only covered two uh, programs, ed to go and Penn Foster. I just did those, those videos not too long ago. Penn Foster was like a couple weeks ago. Um, but if you are interested in pursuing those, I talk about what's covered in that program. Um, I don't endorse any programs at all because I, I've never been there. I don't know. Um, I have been approached before by uh, one slime ball who thought I was going to just, you know, go right to his uh, school and be like, oh, yeah, I'll endorse it because he's like, oh, we'll pay you. I, I don't. You can't pay me. You can't pay me to um, lie to people. All right. I am going to suggest things on my channel that are going to be helpful for the coder. Um, I'm going to suggest things on my channel that will enhance a person's career, not make them overpay for something, not sell them things that they do not need. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to give you guys the truth. And I'm here to give you a little bit of tough love at the same time because that's what I do. 
I do it because I care. And sometimes people don't see it that way. And if you don't see it that way, that's your issue, not mine. Um, but again, I'm here to help you all to kind of understand everything that's happening here. Please go through my videos. Please check out if you have questions about resumes, if you have questions about searching for your first job, uh, what other positions can you apply for, uh, about the credentials, about the associations. I've got it all on my channel. There's over 900 videos, guys. Take the time to look through them. That's my advice anyway. So best of luck to you all out there if you choose to do this. Uh, the RHIA is a wonderful uh, designation to have. The CCS is a very powerful uh, medical coding certification. I am very proud to have it myself. I also have the CCSP. Uh, I got the CCSP first <laughs> and then I got the CCS. Um, and, and it's just, it's a really good thing to have because it does uh, testify to your knowledge. However, you still have to be able to maintain your knowledge. So if you've gotten your, your uh, medical coding certification, you still need to make sure that you are continuing to study, continuing to stay on workbooks, even though you may be working out there in the real world. Uh, continue to study because it's it never hurts to always have that neutral uh, medical coding knowledge because when you work in a place for a while, you can get that, oh, well, we do it at our facility like this here. <laughs> and that may not always be the right thing for another facility. So if you are taking part in my uh 31 day <laughs> uh, medical coder challenge, which is reading the ICD 10 CM coding guidelines four times in the month of October. I am doing it too, guys. Uh, if you read your coding guidelines four times, let me know uh, if you are if you're reading it now, if you're going uh, five pages a day for the next 30 days, <laughs> you'll be able to hit it. If you're using the um, your code books, if you don't have your current code books, uh, C, uh, CMS has the current uh, 2023 ICD-10 CM coding guidelines free for download. So you can follow along there. It's a little over hundred pages, but only because the font size is different. Uh, so I am very excited to see how many of you will complete this challenge by the end of the month. So we will see, but leave me a blue heart if you are. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Please like, subscribe and share, and I'll see y'all again. Bye.